When you're 28, you should not be saying to somebody that you're gonna shit in their wig and calling people cockroaches who you work with. You say take responsibility for your actions and yet you said that you don't remember what happened and that it was all perceived. Is that taking responsibility for your actions? I don't believe she's learnt and I don't believe she's changed. Hi, how are you? I hope that you're very, very well. Yeah, today's video. I need you to know that I know that there are more important things happening in the world right now. I don't want it to come across that I don't care about that or realise that or see that at all. This is something totally separate, I suppose. Please keep supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. Please keep supporting black people in your community. Keep listening, keep learning, keep educating yourself. You know, this isn't over, so I don't want it to seem that I'm just making drama out of anything, but at the same time, I have had so many questions, requests, comments, DMs about this topic, so I feel like I should talk about it. At first I was like, no, 100% not. It happened quite early on in the movement that is currently happening, and at the time it definitely felt really, really wrong. I 100% wasn't gonna do a video on it at the time. At that time specifically, I was spending a lot of time, basically my entire days were just filled with reading, researching, and educating myself. I wanted to move forward with more knowledge and understanding and confidence in what was happening, so that I I can move forward, you know, for the rest of my life to continue the momentum of what's happening. But as I say as well, I had so many messages and comments and I feel like I will never be able to do a Glee video again unless I discuss this. So, I'm going to. For those of you who don't know me, by the way, my name is Amy. I make a lot of Glee content and Broadway content, musicals, Starkid, whatever. So if you do like that kind of thing, then please do subscribe, it would be very nice. And I'm also on Instagram and Twitter as well, and so I'll leave those links down below. So basically, Basically, for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna break down what happened and then at the end I will share my thoughts and my feelings and going forward. I've been a fan of Leah Michelle for 14 years. I mean, Spring Awakening is probably my favorite musical and I've loved Glee and I've spent a lot of time and a lot of my life supporting Leah Michelle. And so basically, a couple of weeks ago, she tweeted out about George Floyd who was obviously killed by the police officers in Minnesota. And so Leah Michelle basically tweeted out saying that she supported the Black Lives Matter movement and it is worth noting that before this happened she had only retweeted three things about the Black Lives Matter movement one was from Barack Obama and the other two were from Taylor Swift and Miley Cyrus. And I think that is worth noting because if you have a platform of over 4 million followers on Twitter, I mean 4 million followers, you have the ability to make impact on people and to, to speak out about what is happening and to only be retweeting other white super celebrities and a previous president is like a bit half arsed and a bit shit. But anyway, so she tweeted this and then Samantha Ware, who was in season six of Glee, quote tweeted her and said, Ella Mayo, remember when you made my first television gig a living hell because I'll never forget. I believe you told everyone that if you had the opportunity you would shit in my wig, amongst other traumatic microaggressions that made me question a career in Hollywood. So after that, Alex Newell, Amber Riley, Yvette Nicole Brown, who was in The Mayor with Leah Michelle, all responded to to Sammy's tweet with things like about agreeing, yeah, absolutely, I feel that, that kind of vibe. Melissa, who obviously played Marley in Glee, also liked all the tweets, so it kind of shows that it is of supporting those comments. So many more comments came as well. Abigail Breslin, who was with Leah Michelle on Scream Queens, liked a tweet about somebody saying, basically along the lines of, why you also shocked Leah Michelle is horrible, I've known it for years, and Abigail Breslin liked that tweet. Dabia Snell, who was in one episode of Glee, said that when he went up to the table at lunch to sit down, well, she said, you don't belong here. But honestly, there were so many comments and examples that people were giving. People were saying that backstage stage she would call the extras and the background artists on Glee cockroaches, that she would have people fired if she just didn't like the look of them, that she was rude, mean, nasty, a complete diva. So many people had so many examples of it. Sammy and Amber have both also had kind of further interviews and commentary and stuff where they've said that they don't believe that at her core she is a racist and that's, or at least that's not what they're saying 
but they both said you know she is kind of a product of a lot of Hollywood and a lot of the world let's be honest where you've got a beautiful white girl who is in the lead role or in the best position or whatever and she treats everybody else like crap because she's allowed to get away with it because nobody stands up to her. They were saying that basically she is a product of that of always living her life of being told god you're so talented and she's certainly allowed to go around treating people like crap and getting away with it which not everybody can. I think the interesting thing as well to note is that the microaggression that Samantha is talking about in her tweet is saying that Leah Michelle would shit in her wig and I think this this definitely does come across as a microaggression to a black person because it's kind of commonly associated with black women wearing wigs so she wouldn't have said that to a white person so the thing is as well that like rumors of Leah Michelle being horrible have been around for ages as I say I've been a huge fan of her and I did a video recently where I talked about Leah Michelle and I said she seems like a lovely person and as I said it I was like I don't know if I believe that but I don't want to get into it right now <sighs> because basically Naya who played Santana in the show she wrote a book called Sorry Not Sorry in that book she basically described her experience on Glee and said that Leah Michelle was a horrible person to work with and she was a diva. Naya was treated really badly for that. She, the Glee fandom were very mean to her. She was definitely seen as just being a bit of a bitch and just being not very nice and maybe a bit jealous. You know, people don't really want to come out when that's the treatment that you get. Kate Hudson, I remember saying that again, she didn't like working with Leah Michelle because she was such a diva. So I'd heard these things and, and Another example that I always think of with Leah Michelle is there is a video of her auditioning and she's singing on my own and the piano player gets the, the next section of the song wrong. and I've heard Ryan Murphy talk about it and I've seen Leah Michelle talk about it and she was like, and I was I was being deadly serious and they were all laughing and, and then I did some more stuff and they laughed again and, and you know, I was just being me and it's like, I think at the time they were really trying to spin it that she's just so much like Rachel and like, she's just so dedicated but actually going into an audition and being rude <laughs> isn't good and if I went into an audition and I did that I'd probably be put on a list and never be cast again. So I think, you know, those those rumours and things have always been out there so now that it's come forward it's a lot easier to believe but to be honest I still didn't want to. I hate it when somebody that you support and, and being very vocal, obviously I've said it online to thousands of people that I support this person that now it comes out isn't a very nice person at all and I, and I wouldn't want to associate myself with. So I didn't want to believe it and I, I think it's like with the Me Too thing when people were coming forward about you know actors that we've all loved for years and years and then it makes you feel icky and horrible as a fan of somebody it's I think it's quite hard to take and I think it's okay to be upset about that but then she released her apology and I say apology because let's be honest it wasn't I'm gonna read it and we're gonna like quickly dissect it one of the most important lessons of the last few weeks is that we need to take the time to listen and learn about other people's perspectives and any role we have played or anything we can do to help address the injustices they face fair enough yeah absolutely when I tweeted the other day it was meant to be a show of support for our friends and neighbors and communities of color during this really difficult time but the responses I received to what I posted have made me also focus specifically on how my own behavior towards fellow cast members were perceived by them. Now already can I just say this is very badly written. What was that sentence? But anyway now when you use the term perceived the official definition of the word perceived is to interpret or regard someone or something in a particular way and she's saying specifically on how my own behavior towards fellow cast members was perceived by them, not how I treated them, how it was perceived. She said, while I don't remember ever making this specific statement, let's just stop right there. While you don't remember it, okay, this happened five years ago. Season six of Glee came out in 2015, so this was five years ago, and you don't remember saying that you would shit in someone's wig. Now, I'll be honest, I've said, I've said and done some bad things in my life, and trust me, I remember them. If you do something that is as bad as saying that you're gonna shit in somebody's wig, in a professional environment and you don't remember that. What I'm trying to say is if you were a nice person 
and got along with people and didn't go around, you know, saying that you're gonna do this or do that to people. Somebody accusing you of saying something like shitting in somebody's wig, you would be like, God, I would never say that. So when you say I don't remember it, it sounds like you're saying that was probably a lie. That's how it comes across. She then said, I've never judged others by their background or colour of their skin. That's not really the point. What matters is that I clearly acted in ways which hurt other people. Fair enough. Whether it was my privileged position and perspective that caused me to be perceived as insensitive or inappropriate at times, or whether it was just my immaturity and me just being unnecessarily difficult, I apologise for my behaviour and for any pain which I have caused. Now, whether it was my privileged position and perspective that caused me to be perceived as insensitive or inappropriate, just, just take a second to just ruminate on that. Your privileged position and perspective, meaning because I was the star, maybe that caused me to be seen as insensitive because I had to have the best lighting and the best makeup chair and I could treat everybody like crap. That's what that comes across to me as. She does say, I apologize for my behavior, but again, it's behavior that was perceived, not that she actually did. Whether it was just my immaturity and me just being unnecessarily difficult. Now, the thing is that you just can't bring up immaturity because when this happened, Leah Michelle was 28. You can't use immaturity as an excuse when you're 28. And also when you've been in the professional world, because she started on Broadway when she was a child, you know how professional people work, you know how to be professional. So don't use immaturity and unprofessionalism as an excuse. You just come across as a bit of a dick. Because it's like it was a while ago, I think that she's trying to make people think that she was super young and you're 28, hun. When you're 28, you should not be saying to somebody that you're gonna shit in their wig and calling people cockroaches who you work with. We can all grow and change and I've definitely used these past several months to reflect on my own shortcomings. <sighs> I am a couple of months from becoming a mother and I know I need to keep working to better myself and take responsibility for my actions so that I can be a real role model for my child. You say take responsibility for your actions and yet you said that you don't remember what happened and that it was all perceived. Is that taking responsibility for your actions? I'm gonna go out there and I'm just gonna say no. I listen to these criticisms and I am learning and while I'm very sorry, I will be better in the future from this experience. Now this is the sentence that really has struck with me because she said, I will be better from this. Now, Leah Michelle put this statement on her Instagram and not her Twitter. So firstly, the thing is that this all happened on Twitter. So you would think, I'll keep my apology on Twitter. She still hasn't posted this on Twitter. She's only posted it on Instagram. If you say it on Twitter, people can tweet, absolutely, but you can't delete those tweets. So if people say things that you don't agree with, then you can't delete them. However, she put it on Instagram and then started deleting tweets. Now, I don't know if she completely runs her own Instagram account or she's got a personal assistant, but there were lots of comments saying that lots of comments were being deleted. And therefore, I don't believe she's learnt and I don't believe she's changed. And that is why I can't support her further. And so on Instagram, there were so many comments. Jared from Be More Chill was in the original production of Spring Awakening as one of the under studies and he came out and he said, I don't know why, but my comments keep getting deleted. But hi, Leah Michelle, you treated me like crap while I was on the show. You made me feel like I didn't belong. You'll probably delete this as well. It's not good when you're deleting comments, Leah. And he generally called her out for her crap excuse for an apology. Honestly, there are so many responses and I could probably fill about three days worth of footage with people giving examples of when they've worked with her and she's been awful to them. Obviously, probably some of those aren't true. People love to jump on a bandwagon. However, I think the majority are and do seem to be. I did post one story about what happened on my Instagram and just basically giving a very quick thing about saying, you know, I feel uncomfortable about it. I don't think that she's changed. I don't want to support her work in the future. I had a lot of comments saying things like, oh, well, I think everybody's lying. You know, she's pregnant and they're trying to ruin her career and so on. And I don't think that anything that happened has got anything to do with the fact that she's pregnant. Absolutely, I wish her no harm. I don't think that she should be attacked. I do think that, you know, I hope she has a great pregnancy. I hope she has a great life. And I do hope that she learns from being called out in this way. And 
not by me, obviously, but by, you know, the people around her who she worked with. You know, hopefully she will learn. I don't know, I mean, she's not posted anything since. But I thought it was really interesting about people saying that they didn't believe everybody else. I understand it because I also didn't want to believe it. I think when you support people, you hope that they're nice people and you hope that they are the people that you would want to be friends with if you knew them and you support them because you like them and then to hear that they're a horrible person is really upsetting and especially if you're a person who really values treating people kindly and you know just generally being a nice person if that's something that you highly regard in people and then you find out that somebody you've supported for years doesn't do that then it's quite hard to take so I definitely understand people you know not wanting to believe it however I think just from looking at everything it would be impossible to not believe these people who are coming out and and saying it and you know it has nothing to do with the fact that she's pregnant now it's to do with the fact that the Black Lives Matter movement is happening people are finally having the strength to speak out and people are finally listening to them like I said about Naya coming out and saying stuff about her previously she was then treated like crap by people in the Glee fandom and nobody really cared that she'd said that Leah was horrible they all then ended up turning it on her anyway and also you have to look at somebody like Samantha not coming out at the time and saying it. The thing is that she was like, I think she was 22, 23. She's on this show, it's her first job, and the star of the show is threatening to have her fired, because she said to her apparently on another day that she was gonna phone up Brian Murphy and get her fired. So you don't wanna come out when you're on the show and say anything, and then when you leave, again, you've only had one TV show, you wanna work again so you don't want to start coming out and saying oh well the white star who everybody adores is actually really mean because who's going to listen to you this is why people are coming out now and this is why people didn't come out then the thing is that at the time Leah Michelle was super good friends with Ryan Murphy I mean I presume she still is but really good friends with Ryan Murphy who casts a lot of TV shows so if you want to be cast you want to try and stay in with people if you want a job you want to try and stay in Alex Newell said that he was dropped for season six and had to ask to come back because he couldn't pay his rent. You don't have the power that Leah Michelle has when you are in the position of Alex or Samantha. Also, she was breaking out into movies at the time. She did like the New Year's Eve movie. She was starting to, she had, I think she had released some music by then. It wasn't a huge success, but at the time she was the biggest star of that TV show and it's very hard to come out against somebody like that. I think going forward, I've had definite thoughts thoughts about listening to the Glee music and Spring Awakening and watching Glee again. I think that we can still enjoy the material that's come before. I mean, I can still watch Glee and although watching Mark makes me feel uncomfortable, I still watch Glee. Um, I have to say some of her songs came on on my like car playlist the other day and I felt a bit like iffy about listening to them. Just for my own personal thing, I think this is. But I do think it's okay to still listen to previous music and things from people who have done bad things or whatever as long as you keep it in your mind and keep it in your heart that this person although you enjoy that musical or that song or that tv show or whatever as long as you still keep it in your mind about what else has happened if you have a conversation with people about it I think it's important to reference that as well you know me personally as I say I wish her the best and I wish her no harm and I hate cancel culture I personally won't be going out of my way to be supporting her upcoming films or TV shows or music or whatever. I suppose it's a time to, to reflect on it yourself and, and think personally about how you feel. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be really interested to know what people think about this. I know that it's going to be very divisive and I feel like people are going to be really split on their opinions and you know, if you totally disagree, that's fine. If you agree, that's fine as well. Please be nice. Please don't send hate to anybody ever, obviously. Yeah, I guess I will see you next time. <laughs> also, as I keep saying, please take care of yourselves. Please keep trying to make a change. Be supportive. Be kind. Just keep being great. <laughs> um, anyway, I will see you next time. I love you lots. Bye.